I'm so thrilled to be part of Uribe's Academy's programs and all these uh, unbelievable line of speakers that have been with you before. Uh, I am humbled and honored by your invitation and I am so happy to be sharing with people from, I would say, all over the world because I've read Uruguay, uh, Mexico, Argentina, Chile, of course, and I am sure there are many other countries represented in, uh, in our audience today. And this is one of the things that I love the most about delivering sessions online through the uh, through technology being an ally, let's say, in, in what we do. I, I have to say that I miss a lot. I miss a lot our face-to-face -face meetings and our face-to-face -face sessions because I love the interaction and I love uh, sharing the energy with people. But this is one of the great things about technology nowadays. We have the possibility of meeting, uh, for learning together, for building ideas together, for voicing our teaching resilience that has been so present during these months. So I am always, if you allow me, I, I will just take a moment just to celebrate all of you teachers joining us from different places in the world. All of us together have created something amazing during these months. It's been draining at the same time, I know, I've suffered it. But at the same time, I think, and this is something I will be talking about today, we have strengthened our sense of community as teachers through, for example, these kinds of, um, of initiatives where we meet with teachers from all over the world and we share ideas, we build knowledge and we support each other. So thanks again, Uribe Academy, for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. And I want to get started because I have so many things to share with you today. Um, and I don't want to miss any of those. So thank you again for being there. I just want to see a little bit your faces before I start sharing my screen, because then I lose sight of you. So hello, everybody. I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces all over there. Thank you for joining us on a Saturday morning. I hope you enjoy the session. My idea today is to share some uh, pieces of reflection on our teaching. I'll be sharing uh, hands-on activities and some frameworks of implementation for what is worldwide called SEL. That is social and emotional learning. Okay, um, so I will be also sharing some ideas about this not being emotional education and the difference between those concepts. Uh, and I will try to share with you my own experience implementing these programs with different institutions. And uh, very humbly, I would say what I have shared during these months that we have been uh, in, in pandemics and everything that we have built together. So thank you, everybody. Welcome uh, to our session. And I will start now. Wait, I will share again because I need to make sure. Yes, I'm sharing sound again. So let's get started. And my uh, presentation today is called Spark the Human Connection in Education, Teaching with the Heart in Mind. Basically, very, very basically, just in one phrase, my invitation today, my dear colleagues from all over the world, is to reflect on the importance of humanizing teaching, humanizing education. Of course, this has been an endeavor that we have uh, been taking over for all our careers, right? And the first thing I need to say is that most of us teachers are already experts in terms of emotional and social development. So my idea today is not um, to teach you about this, but just to give you some ideas so that everything we do in terms of um, incorporating social and emotional development in our classes, something that we have been doing forever, I would say, uh, so as to invite you to systematize that, to make it explicit, to understand that nowadays um, incorporating emotions in understanding of cognition is pivotal for the development of education, for understanding that any process of teaching, any process of learning 
involves our emotions and our emotions can definitely propel this process or hinder it. So the idea would be to reflect on what things we can do to make the most of our emotional universe and to help our students be in touch with that universe and recognize themselves as whole beings, as whole beings. As I always say, I think that at education for a very long time has been focused on what I always say, the neck up, yes? Like this part, very much focused on the development of uh, cognitive strategies, which are absolutely essential, of course, but we also need to understand the power of our emotions and mostly the power of our social connection. We all know that our brain, the human brain, is pro-social. Haven't we learned a lot about this during these months that we have been apart? Haven't we learned about the importance and the relevance of our social brain being apart from our students, not being able to look at them into the eye, to share a hug, to comfort them, they feel a little bit down and so on. So I think that uh, it has become extremely relevant in the world of education, how we integrate our emotions into this process. I have been aware of this importance for many years because I've been studying about it for many years. But I think that pandemic has brought us this explicit notion that we really need to consider and scaffold our teaching and scaffold our pedagogy and our methodology through the use of uh, these activities and these frameworks. So let's get started. We say that we cannot stop the waves, but we can learn how to surf. This is a phrase from John Kabat-Zinn, one of my favorite authors in terms of mindfulness and mindfulness in education. And I think that this is what we've been through. Very, very rocky months where we have learned so much, where we as teachers have evolved enormously. And I think that we need to stop for a while, look back and celebrate all those accomplishments. Probably for many of us, it would have taken years to change and evolve in terms of what we have learned during these months, not only in terms of use of technology, that probably is like the most um, explicit area where we have learned a lot, but not only about that, we have also learned about the deep connection we have with our students, about the importance of nurturing, a caring environment, even here, even in these virtual environments, even through the screen. So this is what we have learned so far. And we have also learned about the importance of lifting each other up. A dangerous plan Just this time A stranger's hand Clutched in mine I'll take Lifting each other up, how important that is in order to strengthen our bridges. That is going to be my first point today. But before I move on, I would like to see all of you once again. And I would like you to share with me in the chat. Let's reflect a little bit about these months that we've been through. What have you learned as teachers during these months of pandemics? Can you share with me in the chat? I would just like to take a moment to celebrate our accomplishments and our learnings, very deep learnings, I'm sure, 
during these months of pandemics. So what have you learned during these months? That we need to keep on learning, forever learners, right? <laughs> I always say I love learning. I always studying. And, and sometimes the other day, my eldest girl, uh, Yara, told me, are you studying again? And I said, yes, honey, I will be always studying. And she said, but come on, do you really need to do it? And my answer was yes. We need to keep on learning, right? The world is changing so fast and so much that we really need to keep up with updating our knowledge, um, embracing new ideas and so on. So being flexible, importance of flexibility, collaboration, uh, connection, uh, what else? Creating an emotional bond with our students, adapting to change, connection again, empathy, Okay, Carmen says, I have changed completely my way of teaching. Wow, I celebrate that too, right? It's a, it is a kind of a reinvention, isn't it? <laughs> we are kind of reinventing ourselves through these times. I celebrate that too. We always need to understand that the power of change and the acceleration of changes during these times are also propellers for our improvements as teachers, right? Um, Betty says that there is nothing like face-to-face -face and being with our students. I also have to agree, Betty, on that. That's another thing we've learned, right? Um, we've learned how to surf these waves, but we also learned about the importance of being with them. And this is, of course, because of the characteristics of our pro-social brain. It is not the same, right? It is not the same. Uh, but we are making the most out of it. That's the important thing as well. Feeling that they need us and they do need us, Gabi. I agree with that. They do need us in many different ways. My dear teachers, let me just share my thoughts on these. These are times, I mean, as teachers, we always need to deploy content. We always need to teach content. We always need to... Uh, teach our students our syllabus and our programs but these are times of emotional connection our students need us the most I would say in terms of our availability as humans so please please do not leave that aspect aside because especially at these times uh, I would say that emotions come first and then after we've dealt with that yes we can start teaching content uh, or I would even say teaching content through an emotional connection. And so then we get the best of both worlds. Can that be done? Can that be deployed in our classes? I believe it can. I've seen it happen. So that is what I will share with you today. Thank you so much for all your comments. Uh, I'm trying to read some of them. Yes. Excellent ideas. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay, so let's keep on going. And let's get started then with this idea of our bridges, our connections with each other. I am referring, my dear colleagues, not only to our emotional bridges with our students. I am also focusing on our bridges as a teaching community these kind of initiatives that brings us together, that helps us learn together and grow together. I am talking about the importance of lifting each other up, helping each other out in these terms of challenge as a community, not only with our students, but of course we know that our students of all ages are grappling with different emotions that range from fear, uncertainty, to optimism sometimes, to motivation, to demotivation. So we are grappling with all these huge range of emotions. Our students are absolutely compromised in that term. And the ways in which students process all this can definitely be helped by teachers, by what we do. So what I am uh, proposing today is to create a safe environment, to create, I don't know if you are coming back to classes, I know that in some, uh, in some countries like Uruguay, you've been teaching face-to-face -face for some time now, 
not yet in Argentina. We have hybrid models, we have blended models. Probably that is going to be our reality for a very long time. But we do need to think as educational institutions about the emotional protocol when we get back to classes, when we see our students again. Of course, we need to take care of the sanitary protocols, absolutely, because that is related to our health. But also we need to take care of our emotional health, our mental health. We have also learned about the importance and the pivotal role that all this has in what we do. We'll also talk precisely about caring. Caring for us teachers, and this is something very important, taking time to refuel our energy, to renew our energy, taking the time for self-caring strategies that will help us be even more available for our students, for our families, for people around us. So it is not a selfish idea, this question of talking about myself and taking care of my own self, but it is related to this idea of refueling and re-nurturing ourselves so as to be more open and more available for our students. We will also talk today about what we've learned during these months, to be strong but flexible at the same time. How we have strengthened our muscles of resilience, our muscles of sharing, our muscles of being with each other, but at the same time being flexible. This is something that is a lifelong learning, my dear teachers. What we have learned during these months is something that will be completely useful in the upcoming months when we think about the future, because we'll constantly need that to new things in upcoming months. And uh, this is one of the skills that is uh, um, one of the most valued, I would say, in the world today, being flexible, but strong at the same time. That's why I use the image of the bamboo uh, that refers to this flexibility, yes, uh, but at the same time, a very strong foundation for us teachers. So let me start with the bridge. And my first activity for you today is the four corners. Probably you have used the four corners many times, but today we'll do it with emotions, okay? So my question for you is, which one will you pick? One, two, three, or four? How are you feeling at this moment? A little bit anxious, grateful, worried, or powerful? Can you share with me in the chat? I will open the chat so that I can read you. One, two, three, or four? So this is an activity that you can definitely adapt and adopt with your students. All the things that I will ask you to do today, it's uh, because you will be able to use this with your students. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm reading all of you. Let's see some of the answers. We've got two, two and three, a lot of two. Thank you for that. I am also grateful for you being grateful today. We should be grateful today for this opportunity of sharing and being together. So the idea is, let's imagine that we are playing four corners online. We could do it also face to face. It's fewer with your students face to face. We use the physical four corners of our classrooms, right? So we've got one corner uh, with anxiety, another corner, corner number two, feeling grateful, feeling thankful about things. Number three, worry. And number four, power. Yes, feeling powerful. So if you are face to face, you can invite your students to physically move into four different groups. If you are online, as we are right now, we can use their breakout rooms if you work through Zoom, for example, and create four different groups according to your choice. So it's not only about choice and voice, this activity I'm sharing with you. It's also about emotional recognition, self-awareness, the first step we need to build when we talk about the development of social and emotional skills. We start with ourselves. We start with intrapersonal skills, and this is precisely self-awareness. 
for you to be able to type a number in the chat, first of all, you have to jump into yourselves. You have to ask yourselves, how, how am I feeling right now? And this is the invitation. The first invitation is to help our students and ourselves because social and emotional development is a journey of enrichment both for teachers and students simply because these are life skills, okay? We need these as much as our students do. So again, coming back to the four corners, we have the four groups, but don't leave it there. It's not only about recognizing the emotion. Take the game, take the opportunity to give each group of students a couple of questions that go a little bit deeper into understanding our emotions. For example, questions such as, what is anxiety? How do you feel it in your body? What is the difference between being worried and being upset? What are the times, what are those circumstances that make you feel powerful? So give each group, I would say a set of two extra questions so that they can continue reflecting on these emotions and sharing if they are willing to, because this is very personal, and sharing a little bit more knowledge about emotions, okay? And probably you have noticed that I have not chosen the typical basic five emotions. So you are not seeing here joy, sadness. I've chosen on purpose different types of emotions. And this is also another trick. When you do the four corners or any other activity, try to use and try to choose those emotions that are not so well known, that are not so popular, that we don't use so much, because this will give you and your students the opportunity to get to know other emotions. This is what we call emo diversity. The higher our emo diversity, that is our capacity to recognize in ourselves and in others, a greater range of emotions, a bigger range of emotions, the more equipped we will be to regulate those emotions, okay? So if we can understand the difference between feeling worried and feeling, um, for example, in pain or feeling sad, we can start thinking about how to regulate those emotions better. So my tip here is do not go into the typical emotions, okay? Try to use mothers so that we start expanding the range emotions our students know because in many cases they don't even know how to label emotions because they have not been in touch with recognizing the difference between one and the other okay so this is the four corners and of course it is a very short check-in activity it's very important for self-awareness development to do very short check-in activities you can also do check-out activities at the end of the class and this will always give you very relevant information for you as a teacher, right? If you find that your students, like today, for example, if there had been more threes in your answer, okay, or more ones in your answers, then I would need to pay attention to that. And I would need that. We need to deal with this before we move into our traditional teaching because it is, is part of our teaching. If you have students in front of you that are very anxious or very worried, their learning capacity will not be the same. It will not be at their best. And I am not saying that I will help each one of you like Stephanie or like Milagros that said that they feel anxious. It is not that anxiety will disappear, but whenever we can identify a name an emotion and label an emotion, our levels of self-awareness is higher and we are already in a process of embracing that emotion. In most of the cases we have been taught, uh, culturally speaking, I would say, 
to deny our emotions, <clears throat> not to talk, <clears throat> sorry, not to talk about these difficult emotions. But later I will share some information with you about the importance of inhabiting these difficult, uncomfortable emotions to get the information that those emotions have for us and then to be able to move forward. So this is the Four Corners activities and I have some questions for you, my dear teachers, in terms of our bridges, our connection bridges. And I have two questions. This is for you to take with you. These are reflection questions that I would like you to take with you whenever we think about taking care of emotions and planning with emotions in mind. So how do we strengthen, for example, how do we strengthen our bridges with students so that they can feel even safer, even in a more nurturing and more challenging learning environment? What are we going to do with this? What could be the strategies? When we plan with our emotions in mind, it's really important to ask ourselves these questions. And I have a lot of answers as a result of my experience, but I would like you to create, you to create your own answers to these questions. Yes, this is the power of inquiry. This is inquiry-based learning and why not inquiry-based teaching? That is something I really uh, believe in. What new bridges can we create with the community? Strengthening our relationship, our partnership with parents, strengthening our connection, empathy bridges with colleagues, cooperating more, team working, how are we going to create new supporting networks in our community? So these are the two questions I want to leave you with today for your own reflection at your own institutions. And as you know, social and emotional learning has been implemented systematically around the world for many years now. But lately, I was in contact uh, with this initiative by United Nations and UNICEF in terms of sustainable development goals. Number four, as you can see on the screen, is precisely related to education, to how we can create through education more sustainable, peaceful societies. How can we work on that? And the United Nations has issued a very, very interesting document. You've got the reference there um, uh, in, uh, at the bottom of the slide. Uh, this is Rethinking Learning, a review on so social and emotional learning for education systems. And they are making very, very strong recommendations to local governments and ministries of education in terms of social and emotional learning cell becoming uh, part of our curricula nationwide. So we need to be creative in helping young people face the challenge of a world that is changing rapidly. And that is precisely where emotional intelligence and social skills can become the best assets for this. And another phrase that is also part of this extensive research worldwide by United Nations, um, that is precisely using cell, using social and emotional learning towards building these kind of societies we are looking for. Some more ideas. I have already shared with you the four corners, okay? But I would also like to mention some other strategies for checking. Remember that I mentioned the importance of checking for self-awareness, for emotional regulation at the beginning of our classes, to welcome our students to these learning environments that we really wanted to be conducive to the content that we will teach, okay? So morning circles. Are you ready, my dear teachers, to take note? Because I will share with you right now the four steps for the morning circle. And then, of course, you can add that. The morning circle works this way. First of all, step number one. Step number one is precisely how we welcome our students to our sessions. How do we welcome, and I am emphasizing the verb, welcome. How do we welcome our students to our sessions? Do we greet them by their name? 
do we ask them a question that we know there is something important going on on a student's mind? Do we know them so as to greet them personally, for example? So the morning circle starts with step number one, that is how we welcome our students to our class. Number two, we will use trigger questions. Questions such as, what went well yesterday? Can you name three things that we are okay during this day, if you're having classes at the end of the day? Can you name three things that went well yesterday? What is on your mind? That is another question, a very powerful trigger question. How does it feel to come back to school if you are already coming back to face-to-face -face classes? If you've been like in Uruguay for some time already going with, uh, with the face-to-face -face classes, how does it feel? How has it felt for you to be in the classroom again? So this is step number two. Step number three, good news, bad news. This is a moment where students share something nice that they would like to share or something that is worrying them. So this is good news, bad news about them. They can share whatever they feel is important for them at that time. And then we have step number four, word of the day. Be careful with your choice of words. How about choosing words such as gratitude? What about choosing a word of the day such as solidarity? What about choosing a word like powerful, like the one in the four corners? What about the word valued? What about the word emotional safety? Okay, so choose relevant, juicy words that will give you the opportunity to talk a lot with your students and reflect a lot about this. So the four steps, remember, we welcome our students. Then number two, we are, use the trigger questions like what's on your mind, what went well yesterday. Number three, good news, bad news. And number four, the word of the day. And this has to be very sequential, very much time oriented, time wise. Yes, because this should happen in no more than five to seven minutes. Okay, I'm always trying to share these kind of activities that are short and to the point. Tribe welcome is simply, this is number two on the slide, asking your student, do you have any idea how we could welcome our classmates tomorrow so that they can also participate? You are exercising voice and choice, something that is extremely important when we talk about students' agency today and the four corners that I have already shared and we have already done together. Are we okay, my dears? Can you type a yes in the chat for me if we are okay so far? Yes. Thank you, Dani, Ines. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Just checking that you're with me. All right, time for revision. <laughs> are you ready to do a very short revision in a fun way? This is going to be a brain break plus revision. So this is another powerful tool you can use with your students, okay? So I am blending now a brain break we know from neuroscience, the importance of brain breaks in our classes. And at the same time, I am using the brain brain for my pedagogy because I want to check that we are okay with some of the concepts I've shared so far. So this is the idea, my dear colleagues. This is a brain break. I will share some ideas on my slide. If you think that the idea is okay, you will have to touch your left ear with your right hand. So right hand, left ear, if this is correct, if this is okay, okay? If it is wrong, if it is not correct, it's exactly the opposite. Left hand, right ear so basically we'll be doing some things like this okay <laughs> but the idea is you will have to think about whether these ideas and reflections that we're sharing are okay or not okay for you so let's start with number hour let me check i want to i will stop sharing 
and I want to check, are you all with me? Yes? Turn on your cameras, okay? I will be watching you. <laughs> Not all of you, but at least some of you. <laughs> so, okay, 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 okay. I don't want you to pick. So, number one, community bridges can only be built by our institutions. Remember, I talked about the importance of our community bridges of supporting each other. Is this a responsibility only of our institutions? Is this only an institutional responsibility? What do you think? Is it right or is it wrong? What do you think? <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, 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 uh. This is our responsibility as a community. Of course, it is extremely important to have institutional support, okay? Yes, that is important. But we can also build our own networks as teachers, as this network that Uribe Academy is uh, creating for all of us, for example, okay? So it is not only an institutional responsibility. We can all strengthen these bridges. We can all strengthen uh, our communication pattern with parents, for example, apart from the institutional decisions. So they are important, but they are not the only thing that can be done. Another one, Four Corners. It could be implemented online or face-to-face, -face, both ways. Is it right or wrong? <laughs> Let's see. And at the same time, remember, this is a brain break. We are moving. We have to coordinate. So use it with your students to check knowledge. Yes, this is right hand, left ear. Yeah, we are okay. Excellent. Next, our sense of trust, agency and safety can only be developed online. A sense of trust, agency and safety. What do you think about this one? This is a tricky one. Is it right? Is it wrong? Is it right? Is it wrong? <laughs> what is it? Here we've got the answer. Nope. The sense of trust, agency and emotional safety in the classroom should always be present, should always be evolving. No matter where we are in a hybrid model, in a blended, face-to-face -face, or online sense of trust, agency, and emotional safety are crucial for the development of our students. And the last one, remember the morning circles with the four steps I shared? Morning circles should have a specific aim and time location. What did I say about that? I said they should happen at the beginning as a checking self-awareness activity. Right or wrong? The answer is yes. Morning circles should definitely have a very specific objective, okay? You need to prepare that and limit the time and the interaction, okay? Good, so we finished with our revision. Let's move now into planning with the emotions in mind. How can we do this? And again, my dear teachers, I have some questions for you. This is going to be your homework, okay? This is going to be your reflection questions to think about well-being, something that is extremely important. And I am referring to as much as to students' well-being as teachers' well-being. This is crucial. This is something that we really, we really, really, really need to consider these days. So my questions are, how do we deal with emotions? and experiences such as fear, trauma, worry, etc. How do we deal with this? Are we making space in our classes to welcome emotions? Another question, how do we create authentic, brave spaces where our students can share safely different layers of emotions and experiences? Are we creating these brave spaces, these authentic spaces? How can we make them bigger? How can we make them more regular and systematic in our teaching? 
and how do we care and execute strategies related to teacher well-being? My first question, my dear teachers, is for you as teachers. What are you doing for your well-being? How are you taking care of yourselves? I cannot stress enough the importance of our well-being and our balance always, but especially during these challenging times. And then my second question would be for institutions. How are our institutions creating these emotional and social protocols so that we all as a community, not only students, we teachers also have space for well-being and for taking care of ourselves. And now I want to move very fast um, because I want to share a couple more activities with you before we finish to some of the basic ideas about social and emotional learning, social and emotional development. These cross-curricular skills, life skills that will equip our students with strategies, with tools for their life, not only for their learning, but for life. Idea number one is all emotions are valid. Have you heard, raise your hands or give me one of those up hands uh, if you've heard about this concept of uh, positive and negative emotions. Have you heard about that? Yes? That some emotions are good, some emotions are bad, some are positive, some are negative. Okay. Truth is that all emotions are valid. All emotions are okay. Emotions are information. Emotions are inherent to the human condition. We cannot help feeling emotions and we should not, um, we should not avoid emotions. All emotions are okay. But as I am saying that all emotions are valid, I also need to say that validating an emotion is not validating behavior, is not validating impact on conduct, is not validating that if a student is very angry, he will somehow hurt physically or emotionally another student. I am not saying that. But that is not, the problem is not anger. The problem is not the emotion. The question is, what do we do with that emotion? Okay, so how does our emotion impact our behavior. This is a very interesting layer, I would say, of emotional development because it helps us reflect not only on what am I feeling, yes, labeling an emotion, but also reflecting on what is causing this pain. What is causing, what is the original cause of my anxiety? Where does it come from? But also thinking not only where it comes from, but also its impact. How is this anxiety impacting my behavior? How is this worriness? How is this anger? How is this discomfort moving me away from who I am and my values. Okay, so that's why I'm saying all emotions are valid, but behavior is another story. And in terms of behavior, things are acceptable or non-acceptable, and we need to be very clear about it. About social and emotional learning that people have is that this is like a very romantic approach, yes? where we are constantly saying, oh yes, we live in the world of emotions, all emotions are okay. And no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, yes, emotions are okay. What we do with those emotions could be acceptable or unacceptable. We need to be very clear about these limits. It's precisely what social and emotional learning is about. That's why in the past, these were called soft skills. They are no longer called soft because there's nothing soft or easy about learning our emotional worlds, okay? And number three, sharing emotions is always an invitation. Remember that I shared with you the morning circles and the check-in activities? Okay, 
if you ask your students to share, it has to be an invitation. Because remember that this is their personal world. This is their private world. And maybe some of us do not feel so comfortable sharing with everybody. Because this might expose us. This is true, of course, especially with uh, teenager students or some adult students. So it's always an invitation. Uh, my point being, when it comes a moment of sharing, just pose it as a question. Who would like to share? Is there anyone that would like to share their own experiences about this? Okay. And please, please remove from your uh, social and emotional vocabulary the question, how do you feel today? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. In most of the cases, you will just get a uh, okay or I feel bored you know that students nowadays are all bored about everything <laughs> okay so try to aim your questions okay try to make it inquiry based with questions that are not answered with only one word but you can just explore a little bit more but it's always an invitation okay some students might not feel okay sharing and that's perfectly okay we need to respect that. We don't educate emotions. There is nothing to educate because there is nothing wrong about them. This is related to point number one, okay? So we don't educate emotions. Yes, we equip students with tools, with strategies to know themselves better so that they can be more empathic, yes, in their circles of impact so that they can become better friends so that they can become better wives, better husbands, better citizens, people that contribute to making a change in our world, okay? And that starts with knowing ourselves, of course. Make it playful, safe, and relaxing. Whenever you take these five minutes, make it something different. Make it playful, make it fun. Do something different for students. Welcome them with music. Welcome them wearing a hat. Surprise them, okay? But always focus your attention on making this environment safe because they will be sharing one of the most precious things with God, that is our emotions, okay? And last but not least, and I left this for the end because you know that our brain remembers far more what we say at the end, Start with yourselves. We cannot teach our students about emotional regulation if we are not regulated first. I have a lot of funny ideas and experiences to share with you, but please, please, please work with yourselves first. Okay, so this is my idea number six about the basics of emotions and an emotionally literate classroom. We also talk a lot about precisely uh, emotional literacy in our classes. This is precisely what social and emotional learning is about. It's precisely about emotional literacy in the classroom. Are you ready for a story? I will stop sharing for a while so that I see you again. And I will read some of your comments in the chat. Okay. Are we okay? Are you ready for a story? Yes, who would like a story today? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being there for me. Okay, I will share a story with you. This is a book which I love and I love sharing this with my students. This is When Sadness is at Your Door. Eva Ellen being the author of this book. And let me just share this story. And we'll do a little bit of storytelling. And this is also called, in our world of social and emotional development, bibliotherapy. I don't know if you've heard about that. Bibliotherapy is the art of using literature for the development of social and emotional skills. Something that sounds quite easy, and it's a great tool to incorporate into our classrooms. So this goes like, sometimes sadness arrives unexpectedly. It follows you around and sits so close to you that you can hardly breathe.
You can try to hide it, but it feels like you have become sadness yourself. So try not to be afraid of sadness. Give it a name. Listen to it. Ask where it comes from and what it needs. If you don't understand each other, just sit together and be quiet for a while. Find something that you both enjoy, like drawing, listening to music, or drinking hot chocolate. Maybe sadness doesn't like to stay inside. Try letting it out sometimes. Go for a walk through the trees. You can listen to their sounds together. Maybe all it wants to know is that it is welcome. And to sleep knowing that it is not alone. When you wake up, it might be gone. Don't worry. Today is a new day. And this is the end of the story. So this is a beautiful story. I always use with my students about sadness because it helps us reflect on the importance of embracing emotions, of knowing that there are, there are no wrong or right emotions. There is nothing like positive or negative about the emotion itself. And in many cases, all we need to do is just give ourselves the time to welcome it, to do something different. But at the same time, this story has a huge focus on regulating the emotion, like go for a walk, have a nice cup of, co of chocolate, hot chocolate, listen to music. So this is also working on how to move a little bit away from sadness which is another great tool we can equip our students with. Not only thinking about the emotion, but what helps us regulate that emotion, yes? So my story is just about sharing the importance of bibliotherapy, using books, using stories to trigger reflections and discussions about our emotional world. And then of course, there could be a hundred strategies uh, you can use with your students. You know how to do it, my dear teachers. So I will not underestimate your capacities here. You will have a lot of resources to use with different books. We can use reflection circles where we ask questions about these emotions, about the character's emotions. How would we change things in the story if we were part of that story and so on and so forth. And of course you can use text books for all ages, okay? I've got uh, young learners here, but then you can use poetry, then you can use raps, then you can use songs, you can use whatever material you think is important, but the most important thing is to create the time to reflect on this. I will skip my revision because I want to move on into our last activity that is this one my dear ones the emotional dj set where before i shared with you the importance of using poetry books literature for all levels in our social and emotional development classes now i will be inviting you to use music I love music and I love using music in all its possible forms in the classroom. I also know we generally, in general, as we teachers, we are very fond of using music in our classrooms. So probably I would like to invite you to add another layer to the use of music. We always use songs to teach vocabulary. We use songs to teach grammar structures, to teach conditionals. Now you can do exactly the same thing that we've been doing forever, but also adding the emotional and social layer to it. So what we will do is the following, if you are ready. Uh, I will share only two songs with you, but I have an invitation. And my invitation is, of course, 
to enjoy music. What else could we do with music except enjoying it? So first of all, let yourselves connect with the music, connect with the different songs, but I need you to be taking down notes or sharing with me in the chat what emotions are triggered with each of the different songs. What feelings, what sensations, what words come to mind when you listen to the two different songs. And then, of course, you can create your own emotional DJ set with many, many different songs, okay? But today is just a sample for you to know how we can use these in terms of self. So, enjoy the music, but remember to shut down ideas or to share with me in the chat uh, ideas, feelings, everything that you think is important and comes to mind when you listen to each of these songs. So are you ready? Yes, are you with me? We are about to finish, yes? Okay, so here we go. First song, and but let me just open the chat because I want to read you. <laughs> I want to be with you here, okay. Here we go. So, let me first find my first song for you. What is it? Oops, I lost it. Give me just one second. Just one second. Get ready to use your yeah your reflections, your definitions about this, and I'll share my screen now so that you can listen to this first song. So ideas, feelings, everything comes to mind. Una gota de luz, una estrella fugaz, una chispa tan solo en la edad del cielo. No somos lo que quisiéramos ser, solo un breve latir en un silencio antiguo con la edad del cielo. Calma, todo está en calma. Deja que el beso dure, deja que el tiempo dure, deja que el alma tenga la misma edad que la edad del cielo. Okay, first word, thank you for sharing your thoughts, your feelings, everything that came to mind with this first song. Let me just close this window. So as to go into my next song, but before that, let me just in case change my connection. Give me just one second because I think that is some kind of an interference. Was it okay, the sound and the image? Was it fine? Okay. Let me just try to connect here. So now, thank you for sharing that. Okay. Thank you. Strong. Now, let's have a look at another type of music and see what emotions are triggered by this. One second before, here we 
go i will just make it bigger so that you can see here we go for giving it to me Because you are sharing completely different feelings and emotions and things that come to mind with this type of music. So my point is, because this of course has a point as an activity in terms of emotional development, and it has to do with this idea that music can trigger different emotions. So we can also use music as an emotional regulator. Whenever you need to invite yourself to feeling more calm, uh, tranquility, relaxing, and so on, you can use some music for that. When you need to cheer up, when you need to energize yourself, you can also use music in that process. So my point being, music is a great emotional. So use it with your students. Use it to ask your students. Okay, what does it feel like feeling remembrance, as you are saying? What does it feel to um, be happy, energetic, excited? And music can definitely be then uh, a trigger for that. So that's the point of this uh, activity I am sharing with you right now. And Okay, I will stop now the video. Thank you for much, uh, so much for sharing all that. And before we finish, I have a little gift for you. Uh, but unfortunately, before we started, I checked the QR code and it's not working. Sorry for that. <laughs> it was a last minute thing. I don't know why it is not connecting to the file. I wanted to offer you a little gift before we finish because we don't have any more time now. And it's just uh, some activities that I uh, prepared for to use with your students in the classroom. Activities for different ages that I didn't have enough time um, today to share with you. So you can send me an email and I will share these activities with you so that you can also have some extra, like a bonus part to implement with your students. Uh, now, time for questions, yes? Abby, shall we wrap it up? Let's talk about questions, comments. And now I think this is a good time for you to turn on your microphones, share your ideas, share your reflections or questions uh, based on today's session. You're I would love to hear you. <laughs> you have any question? Um, I mean, well, I will, this is what I, I, I have kept, I don't know if you can see this, Probably you're oh, going. Oh yes, yes, yes! You are amazing. I love your video at the beginning, and I think that you are amazing. The teachers oh, who are here are amazing. Our students are amazing, and I think that this is the key, according to what you have presented. We have to feel well. 
we have to feel healthy and, uh, and we have to put emotions as part of what we do, what we do nowadays, especially nowadays. So, well, I don't know if you have any question or uh, what I can say is thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. It has been incredible. Really, really amazing. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for sharing. I don't know, but you know that you, this, it's going to be a wonderful day, a wonderful day to me. You know that you have moved, you have moved something in myself. So I think that most of our teachers here feel the same, that, that we, that we have a different feeling from today. Um, so thank you very much for attending this wonderful webinar. It was a, it was a gift. It was the gift, Monica, your webinar. Thank you so much. It was really beautiful. Thank you, everyone. Thank uh, you. Thank you. I feel extremely happy to be sharing with all of you to have the possibility of, of reflecting on all this. It has really been my, my area of expertise for the last years. And I really love sharing these experiences with you because I've seen this journey of development with so many teachers that I really want all of you to be aware of the importance of emotions and cognition and social development in our classes. You know that as English teachers, we've always done this. Don't you think so? We English teachers have always had these different, and it's not because I am an English teacher, but I have to say this, okay? We've always had like a different approach in our classes. We've always been inviting students forever to think about global and local, the famous global approach, haven't we? Through our materials, through our classes, because of course we speak a foreign language, a second language. So why not taking the opportunity of also developing these skills in our classes, in our English classes? So we would be also pioneering in that as well, as we usually do. I think that we English teachers are always kind of state of the art, right? In terms of our approaches. So thank you so much, Abigail and the whole team of Uribe Academy for creating this opportunity. I have enjoyed it a lot, a lot. And I want to read the chat now to see if there are any questions or maybe someone would like to say something before we finish. Well, just to answer that this webinar and all the webinars of this professional program are available in Uribe Academy channel, YouTube. YouTube channel, okay? So you can watch all, all the times that you need to watch all, all this beautiful material. Fantastic. You can see all okay. Things. You're welcome. It, it has been a pleasure. We have also enjoyed. Oh, yes. I can type my email here. It's in the chat. That's my email address. So thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Andre, and thank you for being here too. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. I wish you a great weekend and I hope to see you soon, okay? Thank you, thank you so I much. I hope to see you soon, Moni. Thank you very much. Stay safe, teachers. You are amazing, wonderful teachers, yes. especially you who are very concerned about emotion, emotions. Thank you very much. See you soon. Thank you, Uribe Academy, for these opportunities. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend.